Thanks for joining us. Uh, a couple of things. One thing, as you can see, I'm outside and I hope I can get through this without too many distractions, a dog barking or airplane going over. But uh, it's a nice day, so I wanted to do this outside today. Another thing, we're starting a new study today. We finished up the book of Acts and we're starting in the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> And uh, we're starting a sermon series this coming Sunday on James, and I thought it would be good. James talks a lot about wisdom, so I thought it would be good to have Proverbs and James going kind of side by side. And I know there's a few people that have uh, been studying or starting the book of Proverbs online, and uh, in future I will uh, make reference to those and so you can go watch those if you want to. But um, <clears throat> open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 7. In 1885, I read uh, the author H. Ryder Haggard published a fictional book, and the title of that book was King Solomon's Mines. And it talked about the search for and the discovery of mines that originally belonged to King Solomon in, uh, I think, in South Africa. That's where this was. Now, if you have the book of Proverbs open in your hands, then you have the greatest jewels of King Solomon's mines. He didn't write all of Proverbs, but the major compiler of this book that's inspired by God. Uh, in the Hebrew, the title is Mishle Shlomo. The uh, Proverbs of Solomon. Uh, it talks about wisdom, and we want to be wise. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, <clears throat> says we want, uh, that we want to be like, uh, we want to walk as wise people, not as unwise. We want to redeem the time, that is, make the most of every opportunity that we have, because he says the days are evil. And so we want to be wise. We want to act as wise people in the world. And that's more than ha having knowledge. <clears throat> it's more than having education. We live in a time uh, where there's a lot of people have a lot of knowledge and a lot of education. Uh, I read somewhere in the 10-year period from 1999 to 2009, and that it would even probably be more now, 29.5 million people in the United States earn some sort of educational degree, an associate degree or a bachelor's or a master's or a doctorate. Now, no doubt, many of those who graduate and who graduated this past spring have high IQs and have a lot of knowledge and could properly be called intelligent <coughs> or smart. But how many are wise? Knowledge is necessary to form a foundation for wisdom, but knowledge itself doesn't mean wisdom. Uh, there's much, sometimes there's much knowledge, but there's little understanding. So the book of Proverbs trains our minds to think and to evaluate in a moral context what is right. And again, this is something is desperately needed in our world. <clears throat> it trains us to act godly. With, with courage and to think wise. So uh, here in chapter 1, the very first verse here, the Proverbs of Solomon, it says, and introduces us to the principal author. And he's described here as the son of David, king of Israel. <clears throat> now we know from 1 Kings chapter 4, that's verse 32, that Solomon spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. And then that passage goes on to discuss and describe how that his, he had knowledge of trees and shrubs and animals and birds and creeping things. Um, and people came from all over to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Now that wisdom that he had was, was actually a gift from God. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, it talks about how that God gave him that wisdom. Um, God said, you can request anything, and Solomon requested wisdom. And the Hebrew term for what he requested and for what he received there in 1 Kings 3, this is in verse 9 and verse 11, is Shema. And Shema means a hearing. He requested a hearing heart. 
uh, hearing and listening to God and putting that into practice. Now it's sad if you look at the history of Solomon <clears throat> that he didn't follow the wisdom that was given to him. He married many foreign wives uh, that went against Deuteronomy 17 about a king. And those wives eventually led his heart astray from uh, the living God. So uh, knowledge doesn't always translate into moral action. Knowledge of wisdom doesn't mean uh, the same as acting in wisdom. So learning and memorizing many proverbs is good and would be good, but it won't do you any good if you don't put the truth into, into practice. So this book contains only a small portion of those 3,000 uh, some odd proverbs that he spoke. It's a book that's written under the direction of the Holy Spirit and uh, there are other authors. But first thing, what is a proverb? Well, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word is mashal and it means uh, to represent something, to be like something, to become like, to resemble something. And there's a narrow and then there's a broader sense of the word. Um, a proverb explains a general truth in a short sentence instead of many words. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Just a, a short statement that explains a general truth. In the narrow sense, it does it with these short, pithy statements. And uh, really, it's Hebrew poetry and they parallel lines. Now, there's a broader meaning of the word uh, mashal. It's translated uh, Proverbs here, and it's a longer uh, type of literature, uh, like the acrostic po poem at the end of Proverbs in chapter 31, which describes the virtuous woman. And so, a proverb is a general statement that describes what is generally true about life. It's not an absolute statement. It's not an ironclad promise. Now, the first six verses, after verse 1, of Proverbs gives us the purpose statement uh, with verse 7 giving us the theme of the book. And so in chapter 1, 2 through 6, we see the purpose of Proverbs. And it's given in a series of in, infinitive statements like uh, infinitive to do something, to do this. And so, and look at verse 2, the first part there we can say that Proverbs equips us to know wisdom and instruction. Let's talk about the word wisdom for just a second. It's the Hebrew word kokma, and it's the most common Hebrew word for wisdom. It includes the idea of skill and insight and discernment. It, it, it has the idea of thinking about life's experiences, and it can be general. Uh, and learning from those. It can, it's, it can be used also in a technical sense of technical skill and craftsmanship like battle tactics in the Hebrew Bible, government administration. But in the Hebrew Bible, wisdom, kokma, is tied to the revelation of God. It comes from God. And so it differs from Greek uh, wisdom, which is speculative and theoretical. One person described wisdom well by saying it is exhibiting God's character in the many practical affairs of life. So to know, this book's written so that we will know wisdom. Then he says, and instruction in verse 2. That's often translated as discipline, like in Deuteronomy 11 verse 22. It's used of parental correction, which results in the whole education of, of a child. And so, as humans, we have instincts um, that must be kept under control. Inclinations that must be kept under control. The, the rabbis speak of the Yetzir Hatov and the Yetzir Hara. The Yetzir Hatov is a good inclination. Yetzir Hara is an, a bad inclination. We have those, those inclinations, uh, those passions. But they have to be kept under control. Now in Hebrews chapter 12, the writer tells us that God exercises discipline with his children. And it's not because he hates us, it's because he loves us. It's actually a proof that we're God's child. 
So Proverbs gives knowledge of wisdom and instruction. And then look also here in verse 2. Proverbs equips us to discern the sayings of understanding. Discern and understanding are from the same root in Hebrew. And it's actually the root of, uh, of, of making a, it means between. And so making a distinction between something. It's connected with the Hebrew preposition, which means between. And so the idea is making a distinction between right and wrong or good and evil, but also it can mean making a distinction between something that's good and then something that's, that's better. And that means we are to put this into practice in our knowledge uh, of life. And these sayings of understanding um, would be all those things that are designed to give us this, this understanding. It includes the wisdom literature of the Hebrew Scriptures, but also the rest of the sacred writings. And so it, it not only seeks to give us sayings of understanding, but to teach us how to apply that in our life, to have godly discernment. If we don't have this godly discernment, we can pervert, we can twist, we can even misapply what God says in Scripture. Now look at verse 3. Proverbs equips us to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. <clears throat> instruction, uh, again, is uh, the same word. Um, by paying attention to Proverbs, we'll gain training in wise behavior, in righteousness, justice, and equity. Uh, the word wise here is different from the word wisdom that we talked about earlier, kokma, though they're used as synonyms a lot of times. But this is uh, relating to an intelligent knowledge of, of reason. It's the idea of insight in a, in a practical sense. To think through complex matters and see what lies behind them and then to make wise decisions. Then look at verse 4. Proverbs equips us by giving prudence to the naive and to the youth, knowledge and discretion. Prudence is the idea of being astute, of having sharp powers of judgment. <clears throat> in the Hebrew Bible, in uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, this same Hebrew word is used of, uh, of Satan, of the serpent, and he's described as crafty. It's the idea of shrewdness. Now, in a good sense, this shrewdness keeps us from being misled, and that comes from experience and training. To be naive, that he talks about here, is to be more than, uh, than just simple or ignorant. It means uh, to be just so open-minded that you just take everything in. Uh, the problem with an open mind is everything just comes into it. Now, we're to have open minds. Uh, we're to listen to what God says, but we're to be discerning in that. The root word for naive here is simple, means uh, it signifies somebody whose mind is just wide open and they have undecided views. It may depend on what influential person they talk to, what movie they've seen, what uh, book they've read. And so it's, it's a protection from a wrong view. We're, we're to have an open mind, but not such an open mind that we just take everything in. The protection comes from God's Word. In the same way, he says, Proverbs gives to those who are young and lacking in training and experience what they need. And what they need is knowledge and discretion. <clears throat> now, we'll say several times, but knowledge is just the, not just the cognitive acquisition of facts. It's the skill to put those into practice to accomplish things. The same word is used in Genesis 25, 27 about skill in hunting. It's used in 1 Samuel 16, 16 about skill in playing a musical instrument. And so the idea is you can't act on truth that you don't know. So discretion is also mentioned here as the ability to plan, carry out a plan, plan it, and carry out that purpose. All right, look at verse 5. <clears throat> Proverbs equips us to be wise and understanding people. We'll hear, we'll increase in learning. 
These are the marks of a wise person. And that's the purpose of Proverbs. Uh, one commentator uh, in the Sonsino books of the Bible says, the idea is not original teaching, but that which is traditional, transmitted from the past. Those who are, who are wise will gain knowledge uh, by listening to instruction and insight. They never think they've reached the point where they've learned everything. Proverbs provides wisdom from, from the wisest sources. It gives wise counsel. That means direction. Uh, it's a really interesting word. It refers The Hebrew word refers to a sailor. It's related to the word for a sailor or a rope or a mast on a ship or a cord. And some scholars suggest it originally meant directing a ship by pulling ropes. And so in a moral sense... It refers to the ability to direct and steer our lives, steer the course through life. Now in verse 6, Proverbs equips us with the ability to understand a proverb, a figure, the words of the wise, and riddles. The idea is the more that we are familiar with the book of Proverbs, <clears throat> the greater we'll have the ability to understand various expressions of wisdom whether it's proverbs or riddles or enigmas, maybe better, uh, figures, sayings, and so on, and we can apply them in, in our lives. Now look at uh, verse 7, and verse 7 is the theme of the book. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. <clears throat> the word for fear here can mean terror, just being afraid, but it can also mean reverence. It's an ambiguous term. It has to be understood in its context. There are 613 commands, according to the rabbis, in Torah, 248 positive and 365 negative. Fear God, according to the, uh, the, the compilation of the rabbis, is the fourth of the positive commands in Deuteronomy 10 and verse 20. But it begins right here with fearing God. In, in order to spell, <clears throat> if you're going to learn to spell, you need to learn your ABCs. In order to play an instrument, then you need to know the notes. You need to know the, the scales. In order to do calculus, you have to start with 2 plus 2 equals 4. In the same way, in order to have wisdom, you have to start with the fear of the Lord, this reverence of the Lord. And that's a big problem that we have in our world today is there's not much fear or reverence of the Lord. We have to start there. <clears throat> and we start there and we never leave that behind. We build upon that. And so Proverbs is a call to humble ourselves, to become wise, to listen to God, to reverence Him, and we have to turn away from other voices that are calling us. And so it's, it's calling us to be careful to heed what God says in, in His Word. Now, in Scripture, there are two kinds of wisdom, there, and these are competing for our, our ears. The Bible calls them wisdom that comes from heaven and wisdom that is earthly unspiritual and of the devil that's in James 3 verse 15 and verse 17 the purpose of Proverbs is to explain and call us to this wisdom of God in fact in Proverbs wisdom is pictured as a woman calling out <clears throat> in the street are we going to listen to wisdom or are we going to listen to foolishness now better way to put this is this wisdom of God is in Christ. And Paul writes in Colossians 2 and verse 3 that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So this is really an exciting study. I hope that you'll continue to be with us. I hope you'll read in the book of Proverbs. Next week we'll begin and pick up with verse 8 of chapter 1. But let's close with a prayer. Dear Father, we bow before you and we bow with humility. We thank you for another day that you've given us, and we thank you for the beauty of this day, the sunshine, and the world that you've created for us to live in. 
Uh, we pray your blessings upon us, Father. We pray that you'll continue to be with us, be with your church. Help us to listen to you. Help us to trust you. Help us, Father, as we begin this, uh, this study in Proverbs, help us to listen to wisdom. Help us to become wise people. Help us to be characterized as wise people who listen to you and uh, we block out the competing voices that are in the world uh, and build our lives on foundation of wisdom so that we can become wise. Thank you for Jesus being the wisdom that comes from you. Help us to follow him and we thank you, Father, that you sent him to be our Savior. <clears throat> We're thankful that he died for our sins forgive us of our sins and father we're longing for the time when all things will be made new we will be around your throne and we will behold your face uh, apart from the sin and the struggles that we have in this life and these things we pray in the name of jesus amen